While he was cheating, I was beaming in the beamer, just beaming. Can't believe that I called him and cheated. So I found another way to make him pay for it all. So I went to Neiman Marcus on a shopping spree. And on the way, I grabbed Soy and Mia. And as the cash box rang, I thought everything away. There goes the dream we used to say. Hey girls, we are back. Um, it's Malik. Uh, we're back for another week. What's up? What's up? I have my team with me, as always. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> what's up, y'all? Hey, Trey. So uh, on this team, my question. Oh wait, hey. But on this team, <laughs> my question is, um, what position do I play? I Am was, I? I want to know. I just wanted the girls to check in. <laughs> Bitch, I need you to, before you start putting things out there like teams and stuff, I need to know in my life, the running back, <laughs> you, the you on the receiver, the you, QB. You on the team. Yep. Hey, Stevie. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all. What's up? Um, You know, we always have to check in. Did the girls have a baby? Did they do anything? Are they mad? Are they fucking anybody new? What's up? <laughs> I thought you was about to say, is they fucking anybody's nigga? <laughs> You know, up if that's the tea. I was about to say, girl, that's oh, messy booze. No, baby. That's Bitch, why are you putting my tea out there on the street? Ooh. Just kidding. I don't do that. No. I have real issues with infidelity and <laughs> affairs. And stuff. I don't play with that shit. I don't know why um, I thought she was going to give that bitch. No. <laughs> but, no, but, but Stevie, you got something to tell us? <laughs> like, I know I don't. I just, I just thought that's what the girl was going to give. Girl. That's what I say, girl. Because it's a. Back to my birthday, bitch. My, <laughs> Ah, bitch, you tried it. I'm, gonna leave that it, I'm not gonna ask. We're not gonna put this on blast <laughs> no, on the show because no, we're not because Stevie is a fucking key. Okay, bitch. so what have oh, what I'm, have you been up to, Trey? Bitch, let me tell y'all. Um, one thing I hate. Um, I kind of hate lifeguarding. Um, so if you didn't know, I'm not in New York for the summer because okay. shit just ain't playing out. Mm-hmm. But um. I went home, I'm home in Philly, and I'm lifeguarding in my normal fabulous job as a lifeguard. And the kids hate me, which is really rare because, you know, I love kids. And they just don't like me. Like, I'd be really nice to them children. But I remember when we first started, some kid told me he hate that. I would walk past and he'd be like, I hate that lifeguard. (laughs) And I'd be like, well, bitch, I didn't even do nothing to you yet. Like... I ain't even put you in time out okay, yet. You said yet, yeah, girl. Damn. But I really don't be, none of the old kids like me. Like, the teenagers hate me because I be putting them in timeouts like they five. And it'd be my favorite thing. Like, I'd be like, bring that chair over here and sit by me. And they'd be like, when can I get up? When I say you can get up. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Hey, Aaron. That's why they hate you, Trey. <laughs> Um, but the little kids shouldn't hate me. It should be like the grown kids, the the fifteen year olds need to be hating me. But like they don't hate me. It's them little kids that I don't even be doing nothing to. They be hating me. Like them little seven year olds. Like little niggas, shut up. Just because I didn't let you flip from the side of the pool in a two feet. Like you want to die? I'm weak. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I have been playing my Switch, my Woo! Nintendo Switch. Okay. Um. You know, Super Mario Odyssey, you know, I knew it was going to be, like, one of those games that, you you know, you're going to play it for a while, but this shit is fucking difficult. I believe it. I'm irritated. Somebody help me. Mm-hmm. So, I didn't know they sold uh, Super Nintendos in, in, in Target. Like, you can actually buy- Oh, yeah, the purchase. actual Super Nintendo? Yeah. Like, oh, nice. Yes, they sell them oh, yeah, now. I'm gagging. Usually, you have to go to, like, a, a store and buy it used. Right, but right, right. They are, they're actually selling them at a store. So. That's fantastic. Yeah. I kind of I need I need I to, up on Super I, I need them okay. to uh to no, start I selling that Sega Genesis again. Oh, okay. That's what the fuck I need. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, so I came up on like PlayStation. Oh, uh-uh. Um, uh-uh, I'm not as old it. as you hoes. You missed it. I had a PlayStation One and a two and a three and a four. No. In an Xbox. I had a, uh, you got it. 64, girl. Yeah. Bitch, how I, old are the you? Game of the, car, the cartridge man. consoles are like... The, that's but no, I had a Game Boy, Game Boy and a Color. Game Boy SD. and uh-huh. a, Oh my God, I oh love my God. Game Boy. That was fun. Yeah. So what have you been up to, Stevie? Um, I've been giving it a lot of good advice. Oh. Um, Yeah. That okay, has helped a lot of people. At first, I really thought you was like, I've been giving really good blowjobs. <laughs> and I was about to say, no, TV. I'm great, a sh- gowns. great, beautiful gowns. Great gowns. You know, we're not going to go there. Um, but no, I've been giving out a lot of good advice and I've been helping a lot of people. They reach out to me and, you know, Stevie, I'm going through this. Now, I never thought that I would give out that type of advice, like be able to help people. But people have been reaching back out to me. Bitch, your advice helped me. Your The podcast helps me every time I listen to it it's you know dope advice and you guys are really really doing a good thing but for me i was just like bitch not me not the girl who always needs advice not the girl that you know it was really really shocking so that's basically all i've been doing oh and getting ready for to be an uncle still yeah Woo, yeah. sister did not drop that bitch yet but woo, it's coming it's coming yeah. lord have mercy um you know in summer school so that's going well and um yeah i i, I the podcast is beautiful i just want to say like when people reach out to us and say that like they they you know we affect their lives and that you know i, I remember one time we we got a dm or a message of saying that like you know the person had contemplated suicide and whatnot so it was just it was it's literally been um it's overwhelming, but at the same time, it's so humbling. So um, I just want to say thank you. Um, but yeah, so we're about to get this show started. Um, I have a question for y'all. This is a really interesting one. This is a good one. So if you could rewrite your favorite movie um, with queer characters or queer storyline, which movie would that be? I don't know who I want to go first. Aaron? <laughs> Look. <laughs> I only did that because Trey pointed at you. <laughs> Always getting the shit started. Um, Aaron hates. See, he likes. So let me tell you this. I like putting Aaron and Trey on the spot because they're both of the people who like to be prepared and calculated. And they're both very meticulous. So I like to just throw them on the spot so they gag. And one day, here's the funny part. One day we're just going to be like, nope. <laughs> and, and that'll be okay. And that'll be your end. I'll be like, and Stevie? <laughs> next, next guest. <laughs> No, I um, I think that's actually one of the only Virgo traits that uh is true for me. That I like to be very like I'm, you know, I like yes. to plan things out and prepare them. And, and if they're not, I get really anxious. You be over there brewing. Yeah, Look, what um, she's brewing now. <laughs> she's getting herself together. No, my um, so my my movie would be well. I I actually um, I had a thought on Twitter a while ago that. Uh, Mulan would be such a good story if it was told from a trans point of view. Uh-huh. Um, like think about the the song Reflection. Um, you know, why is my reflection someone I don't know? Uh, when will my yeah. reflection show uh, who I am inside? Um, how Mulan goes to the army posing as another gender? You know, what have you? Um, I think that would be a fantastic story to tell from a trans point of view. Yeah, um, with this climate. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I had that thought on Twitter a long time ago, and people were like, "Oh, that's a really, that's a really good idea. You should like write it." And I was like, "Oh, Lord, um, that's a huge commitment." But um, I still think that would be a, a really great um, idea for an old classic. Um, you know, all the things in it would still snap, like you know what I'm saying, like all the songs and everything. But you know, because um, if you think about it, it's like it's almost being told from that point of view a little anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's yeah. So that that would be what I would rewrite. Malik, what's yours? <laughs> Anywho, do you have one, Stevie? <laughs> I, I need you know she. she girl, yeah, the girl. Oh, I, I want to be a little. I want to be a little kiki. Y'all gonna probably read me. I don't give a fuck. I want to. Oh, I'm gonna be ratchet. I want to do a gay remake of the Players Club, bitch. <laughs> that shit would be fab, bitch. Just the girls. The girls are kiki off of who gonna play Diamond? Who gonna play? Because definitely sat in that. Because that, 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 all I can see, Ooh. all I can see is that fight Ooh. happening again. Exactly, and that'll oh, be a fucking key, uh, bitch. It'll be, it'll be really, really sad for like you know the Ebony scene that happened. That part would be like dramatic, but everything else would be a fucking key, bitch. The Players Club, bitch. I would be here for it. I swear, bitch. I'll be the first in line to watch it, girl. 
So y'all are about to be so weak, but I just changed my answer. But the movie that I want to rewrite is Dream Girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? That would be bad. Oh, that would be fucking sweet. I'll be here for that. No shade. Like, you know, it would be like three or three or four gay boys in a singing group. And like, you know, you know, Effie would be, 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 you know, the girl. And then like, bitch, somebody would be sleeping with her boyfriend. That would be Beyonce. And just like, it would be tease and drama. And like, it would be amazing. So yeah, dream girls. Um, and I would actually like to see that on Broadway played by all gay men. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that would be cute. Like no shade. (laughs) It's so funny that you you say that, and then the things I, I thought about this old um, Glee episode where they they like the, Rachel and Kurt encountered like this group of like super theater kids, mm-hmm. and one of them was like, "I'm playing Rizzo with an all male production of Grease," and I was cracking up because I was like, "That would be a key." If somebody actually put that on. That also makes me think of the uh, episode of Orange is the New Black when, um, so, oh, darn, what was the, uh, the girl with, like, she runs and she has the curly, she play, uh, has the curly hair. Oh, But Lord. it was when she had a flashback and she was at a white school and they were putting on Dream Girls. So it was like <laughs> <laughs> all white students playing Effie and everything. And they had, like, these big wigs. And, you know, like, they're saying these, they're singing, like, these, you know, powerful ballads and whatnot. And then, like, she's like, oh, this is what white people do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Trey, what what movie would you like to remake? <laughs> um I would like to just see Love Jones be remade. Okay. That's like one of my favorite movies. Um Love Jones, if you don't know, is like my all time favorite movie. I've seen yes. it three hundred and nine times yes. and counting. I'll probably watch it tonight if it rains. Um but I would just really love to see Darius and <laughs> somebody else yeah. <laughs> but like just i just think the love story was just so it, it was just a cute love story and it's not your typical love story like yo some shit really went down oh, and it wasn't like oh we fell in love and we were happily ever after like it was still like bitch we don't know if this shit easy is even gonna happen once we kiss like but I just I just want to remake the scene. Uh, my favorite scene in the whole movie is, well, I have two. It's the one when they were at the um, reggae club and they was dancing and it was just all red. That's yeah. my, one of my favorite. But also when it was like um, she, Darius and Nina were getting back together for like the second time and they were at the, um, he came over, but she made him sleep on the couch and he was being all hot yeah. and he was like, he walked up all tiptoeing up the steps and she was all frustrated. He was all frustrated. And she he has, Nina, can I show you something? Mm-hmm. And then it was the and then they started playing at Maxwell. And then you just knew they was getting that good. It was getting popping and that hot and steamy room. Ooh, I just that's my favorite scene. I love it. I love but it. I would definitely want Love Jones to be remade, remade over. I love it. Um so yeah, um, we are going to take a small break. Your girls get your things in order because we're gonna come back with some teas. We'll be right back. While he was in, I was in the beam just feeling. Can't believe that I called him cheating. So I found another way to make him pay for it all. So I went to Nina Marcus on a shop in Sweden. Hey babies, this is Malik and you're listening to him. Make sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at him podcast and step it to our world at himpodcast.com. All right, girls, we are back. So I <laughs> I know this happens to, I know if it happens to me, it happens to everyone. So let me set up the story. You know, we're all, we all play around on Jacked and Grinders and things. And, you know, um, yeah. the apps, or if you're not playing around, you messaging or, you know, putting your toe in the water or something. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this thing I don't remember, like, I mean, I've been on dating apps for a while. And when I say a while, like, you know, 
since I would say 20, I remember our BGC days, you know, and then like BGC phased out or became obsolete. And then the girls started using Jack and Grindr and, you know, like applications that were uh, location based, like based off your GPS. But um, I feel like that there's this thing that's new and people who people are basically having anonymous sex. And so this person will hit you up like a regular message. This person does not have a picture. This person does not send a picture, but they're like setting up a place to have sex. And all the only pictures that you may get are like a dick and an ass, but there's like literally no, um, no face, no, no exchanging of like, you know, facial pictures. And um, I think that it, it, we, I wanted to center discussion around it because I mean, obviously, you know, having sex with someone, you know, is a big health risk. Um, but I think that there are other topics um, or other, um, how do I say, like there are other, we need to have this discussion because there are other implications that go along with having an anonymous sex. And you saw this on, on no. you never seen the video? You know. You there are videos. Seen, you never seen the girls in the in the motels and lay it up on the bed, and then somebody will walk in anonymously, uh, anonymously and just have sex with them. Yeah, like, you never seen those videos. I have this one guy. He stays in. Girl. I guess he's, he lives. He lives in East Village, and he has a glory hole like in his house or apartment, yeah, apartment or whatever. And he like literally just solicits people to come over, put their dick in the in hole, <laughs> the glory like, hole, and suck it. Like, and they're they're like, there's this culture where people are having a sex with people that they don't know, like. Or don't even know what they and look some like. Young girls too. Mm-hmm. They be like, "Oh, this eighteen-year-old came over." I'm like, "Girl, first of all, ooh, yeah." <laughs> you don't. So people don't message you without a picture. No, no, it's not that people like you know people do, but okay. um, it's it's different between somebody messaging me without a picture that's just like that considers themselves like DL mm-hmm. and just doesn't want to send one, and somebody who you know, specifically wants an anonymous, like, okay. interaction. Um, I haven't had anyone approach me okay. on that level. Me um, I, the, the, but the glory hole thing, I do know of people that, um, that have done, have a setup like that, mm-hmm. you know, in their apartments or, wow. you know, what have you. Um, I, uh, when I'm confronted with, with stuff like that, it's like, I immediately try to understand the reason behind it. Um, there can be a thrill associated with, um, like, it's like, I don't know who it is, you know, blah, 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 like, like, or if you, I guess for the glory hole thing, if you love sucking dick that much, it's like, it doesn't matter. You just yeah, want to suck some so dick, you know? And, and I don't um, want to read the girls. No, not, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Out. No, but you got to pull the whole thing out in what, order to yeah. talk about so it. So what I know? was just, what I was well, saying was that, you know, like, I, I understand that there could be a thrill associated with, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, like it, I get that um but in practice it's like it's i don't know like it, it it can be um it can be irresponsible and um a little dangerous yeah, very much so. um if so if if we're going beyond the glory hole thing and you know just people like in hotel rooms somebody like walks in it's mm-hmm. like you know you are kind of at your most vulnerable and you're allowing someone, you know, access to you in, you know, the most intimate way. And you don't know what could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, that person could have, you know, intentions that, you know, don't line up with yours and you could be signing up for one thing and get something completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's dangerous in that way. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. physically very, very dangerous. Um, and I mean, you know, possibly mentally as well, because something could happen to you and then you could, you know, have lasting effects. Um, and the irresponsible side, I mean, I don't know. I can't like, you know, it, it's difficult for me to say, oh, that's irresponsible to just suck somebody dick that because that contradicts the, the point that I make. Well, I mean, it, well, we do have to state the facts that having yeah. having sex with someone that you don't know and you don't know their sexual history can be detrimental to your health. And it's the people around you. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that that that's not that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it's difficult for me to say that with like a full Hey, that's not because um, I'm trying to think of, you know, 
early on when I was having sex, and even recently, it's mm-hmm. like I don't necessarily sit down and have a whole conversation about, about sexual okay. history with the person. And it's like this idea that people have, and I've commented on this before. It's like just because you've known them for like a month, or you've gone on like several dates with them, or you know whatever, that doesn't mean their body has not changed throughout that time. It's like you know if you don't have that conversation about sexual history, it's like you're, it would be the same as if you just be having sex with a guy you just met. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, Oh, I'm going to have sex with him. I don't know him. And it's like, you know, his favorite color and that he likes steak, you know what I'm saying? Does not make that person any uh, more safe to um, have unprotected sex with. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, I, what I was going to say was that it's difficult for me to say things like that because especially when it comes to second dick, who sucks dick with a, condom with a condom on? Other than those who are escorts and do that because they, you know, whatever. That's their job. I mean, your run of the mill, like you know, person or you know, and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not generalizing too much because I mean, there are those who probably do. And kudos to y'all. I don't necessarily think about it like that. Like I just be like, all right, well, you know, we your dick out. We gonna suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so it's like it's strange because. It, there's still that hesitation and maybe it's subconscious for me because it's not that I wouldn't have a conversation about sexual history it's just that I don't, I don't. Yeah. Um, okay. and I know that I should but sometimes in that moment yeah. you, you know go. it just goes I just want to pull it you know this what I'm conversation saying? is getting too close to home you know and, and then I say things okay so like it's like I associate having a conversation about sexual history and being protected when it comes to penetrative sex yeah um, but when it comes to just Sucking like oral it. Second dick, eating ass, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I don't think Thank about it. Mm-hmm. But also, let's be, I mean, I was, and I mean, in keeping, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, or correct me if I'm wrong, but I was also under the impression that you are, um, the, the likelihood of you contracting anything is um, more possible to happen if it's oral than rather than penetrated. Mm. So actually having oral sex is more dangerous than having so, unpre- now, <laughs> so now the girls got to think now. Right. So this like so what do you do with that information? Do you so when it's like Discussion. hey you going you go, let's, let's up my dick. Okay, so but then and see this is where my pessimistic like douchey nature comes in because I'm like we could have a conversation about sexual history and it's like how do I know that you're not lying misleading me uh-huh. or you know leaving out a part well, that might have. might be seen as unsavory yeah, right. mm-hmm. you know what have you unless we go we hold hands and go to the clinic together and get tested and then much. wait like you know a week or two you know and get our results but and who's then doing that in a hotel though like, yeah we like we, we celebrate getting our results by having sex you know what I'm saying it's yeah. like can you hit me up so, in two weeks you know what I'm saying it's like so but I don't want to. I don't want to throw that into the pot and not say like, okay, well then we shouldn't have a conversation because who knows if they're lying or not. I mean, definitely have the conversation. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't know where, where to go from here. Go ahead. Okay, so for me, um, we know that I have a hard time with hooking up with anyone, mm-hmm. um, no matter just in general. Um, I have this mm-hmm. thing where. For sex with me, it is a connection type of thing. It's more connection than just sexual urge in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so I need to be totally safe, totally comfortable, totally connected with the person because it really it's more than just sex. Um, so for me, um, with the whole trusting of somebody, um, I think that's where you won't catch me hooking up is because... One, I have to be comfortable and trust you enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And we can have this conversation and I'm going to, normally for me, if I'm having this conversation with you, I've already begun to trust you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be doubting whether you are telling me a lie. And if you're telling me a lie, then there's a special place in hell for someone who's going to lie about something like that Mm -hmm. for, for, for just to get some ass, like for real. Yeah. Um, On the discussion of just anonymous sex in general, um, and just, um, I, I will say that I have been thrown hit up for some shit like that okay. on yeah, Jack and stuff. I think, oh, but yeah. you know me, I don't answer shit. <laughs> I just you just you just throw it in my. It's like you throw it in the um pond, and I just look at it and go like, oh, mm. and move on. Um, but I think that, um. There's a certain type of thrill, I think, that people, just like with couples, when they do, like, role-playing. Mm. And the, the oh, that's someone's 
someone at the bar is your wife, but you just don't know, and you're meeting for the first time, and you go up, you tell them, oh, I have a room, and you leave the room key, and they're that type of stuff. (laughs) And it's kind of, oh, we're like here, like, oh, yeah, bitch, that's popping. When when it's just us and you you got your partner and you're what it is, but when it's not that and it's something else, you're like, when it's not bitch, that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. Like for me, I couldn't do it just because that's just not how I'm chemi- chemically like just set up. Like mm-hmm. there's just, it just wasn't, it's not meant for me. Um, but I can see for some people, yeah, like there's a risk. Um, people live off the adrenaline mm-hmm. and the risk um, of being in those, um, I don't want to say do or die situations, uh, but risky, but just risk, risky, risky situation. Risky and um, I always <laughs> I've heard stories of people um that have just well. First off, let me say I had heard from the streets, and the streets is Malik. Okay. okay. From a friend of Malik's, they said that the um sex shop around the corner from my ha- my my oh. dorm is a going. glory hole oh. in it. I done heard. Now I haven't frequented and I haven't seen it with my own eyes, but I had heard from the streets. Well, we need you to investigate. In the streets, <laughs> bitch, you can go. Uh uh-uh, girl, you the one brought it up. You go. In the streets is Malik. I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> if I'm keeping it a super buck, the the thought of using a glory hole or sticking my dick through one and having somebody suck it. <laughs> That 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 has crossed my mind a on more than one occasion. It appeals to me. I might have pleasured myself to the thought once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's why I said that I can get that there's a thrill associated with that. Yeah. Oh, I don't. No, I mean, like, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I and I'm here. The thought, the thought doesn't necessarily translate to action. I mean, it hasn't yet. Um, but not to say that it hasn't crossed my mind. You know, as a possibility. I'm trying to install the glory hole in my apartment right now. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Shit. Would you got company like this? Malik, Malik is gonna be like Brandy Glanville, and instead of a stripper pole, she's gonna have a glory hole at every home. Lord. Um, I think that obviously, um, just having sex with someone who you don't know, a stranger, um, you have the increased possibility of like, you know, either transmitting or, um, you know, being infected, um, either with HIV or some other STD. Um, so you have that, um, with me, I'm very, I'm a very small guy. So like when I'm dating, being comfortable and being able to get out of situations are very like, I, I like, I need to be around someone, so, with someone comfortable. So it's anonymous hookups are not something that I could do ever. Um, I've been in situations where people have like tried to hurt me and people have tried to like take or steal like things from, have stolen things from me. So it's just like, you have that as well. Yeah. Um, one thing as black gay men, I really want to like, I always say this, but I want us to be able to practice our sexuality outside of the dark. Like I think all of this whole, like, you know, not having pictures on jacked or like, you know, hooking it up, hooking up anonymously. I think that's all it's like literally coming from the fact that we're not able to be out and open as gay men, you know? Um, And that's just like, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to like talk about the situation. It is 2018 and we are still confined to sexual apps, you know, like come on. And I, I constantly fight in my own personal life with being comfortable in my body. So I know that it's a challenge and it's difficult. But again, I think the things that we have like, you know, I, I go back to old, we were talking about glory holes, but you think about old New York and you could go to a video thing, like a video, a movie to go get movies, but you could get your dick sucked. And we had to do that because like gays couldn't be out and about. And it's just like, why are we still living in the dark ages? You know, um, I a baby, come on out, come on out. Like, you know, um, and it really, it really sucks that this is like, you know, what, what's become of the community, but it's just like, and again, like, I don't want to sit up here and like, I don't want people to think that I'm speaking from a high horse. Cause I think we're all curious to what's going on. And I think we all want to do the things sexually and practice and explore, but there don't risk your health or your livelihood or your, your, your personal 
your your belongings or anything just for exploration or just for the thrill. Like it's not worth it. And then also, if you're not hurting yourself, you could be potentially damaging someone else. And so, you know, you have that aspect or, you know, to think about that on that end. So it's just like, again, we have to like, I think a lot of times we make decisions based in self, like in, in selfishness, like, mm -hmm. Rarely do we ever think about the other person. Um, and again, uh, this topic hits close to home. Um, but I just want to say that we just need to really start having certain conversations because we are, like I said it a few episodes ago, we're literally passing that pain on and we're transferring it from person to person. And it just has to stop, you know. Has anybody been to a sex party? <laughs> I've been like invited, I but I've declined every time. I but no. Segue mm -hmm. for you. I um I haven't. I am interested yeah, in too. maybe going. I'm I'm be honest. I'm not entirely sure I will participate. Yeah. I'll probably be one of those like watchers because if it, keeping it a buck, I, I I'm into that. Um, okay. I, I like to watch. Watch. Um. So that I'm into that. So you know. If there was invitation came up and and if I did a who all going okay. and it was people that you know I'd like to see <laughs> hey girl, in such pull positions, up. Pull up your you know what I'm saying? Because like, you got you guys invite me and I don't know you know what I'm saying because this one of the situations in during which a who all going is is necessary because the girls you know I ain't gonna have no fun if it's if it's, it's you know girls. if, if y'all gonna be con, you know contorted in these in these positions I want to I want to I want to like what I'm you seeing. See what you feel doing? me? Uh -huh. in these Come on. You know. Take him off the mic. Go ahead, girl. Um, no, I remember. I don't want to say it was a few years ago, but there was it, it was a few. It was a year or so ago, mm -hmm. and um, there was. I, I hope I'm not getting this wrong. It was like during the summer. It was like a sex party, but like they were advertising it online, and like people were getting tickets, mm -hmm. and it got canceled. But I remember it was like a big thing. Um, and it was like, yeah, it's you have enough condoms. It's like a three day weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and girl, I couldn't do it. Like I, I would be like, I'm just self conscious. I think for me, sex is such a vulnerable state mm -hmm. that I need to be so comfortable that I can make every noise that I want to make. I can, I can, Ooh. I can try everything that I want to try with that person, uh -huh. and not have onlookers looking like. What that bitch do? Is she up on the ceiling? Is she hanging from the ceiling fan? Like, uh -huh. I don't need all these people to be looking. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen, at, like, I know of, I don't want to say I know of people, but I know people who have talked about it. Like, oh, yeah, there's this page that these boys have Doing um, the things. sex parties, like, every, like, once every couple months. And they got rules and stuff. Yeah. And, um, like, so one thing, it was, like, there's rules of, like, um, no cameras. Yeah. You got to you gotta be naked at the door. Um, condoms and everything. It's perfect. Yes. Everything is um, provided, like, lube, condoms, all that stuff. Drinks is provided. Mm -hmm. um, there's... This woman was advertising like three rooms, um, upstairs and the downstairs, uh, all this stuff. And I was just thinking, like, for me, like for me, mm -hmm. I'm just not comfortable. But I can see why people would be like, "Well, bitch, if I could do, you got a a, a place where you, a safe space okay. to be liberated and do what you want." And what it reminded me of is, I think. I don't want to say it reminded me because I wasn't around during those times, but of like um, bathhouses. Ooh, um, they still have them here. They around. You can pay like Mind you, I still want to go yeah, to a bathhouse. Bath okay. Um, can, I'm just a chicken though because it's like birthday, we'll don't be like don't be a chicken. I'm so I think New York I, is where you let it all. We'll the out. reason why the reason why I say I'm a chicken is okay. So um, those of you that live in New York City, um, no, 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 because there's a place. Um, I went to this place called The Cock, and it's this like bar club thing where like they have like a downstairs, and it's like it's you know the, it's like mad dark, like you can't see nothing down there. It's it's open, everything you do whatever you want to down there. Um, and I went, and it was it was definitely an experience. Um, it was intense. 
Uh, I do want to go back um, because I don't think, and I think I was like, I was like shocked, too shocked to really take it all in, you know, and I was not. I was just drunk. Okay. So <laughs> were you high? I think I need to be high. Yeah, I think when if you're high. Yeah. Like, it's no shade. Like, I think that when I'm nervous about something, especially like parties and stuff, and I've never been to a sex party, but I've been to like a underwear party mm. and literally- Literally, like they made you strip, it, but the girls were fu- probably fucking. I wasn't, mm-hmm. um, but like they make you strip. But like, I feel like if I was drunk, I would have been like, I would have been paranoid. But like, I was high, so I was just like, oh, yeah. bitch, girl. Oh, my- yeah, <laughs> I've actually been discussing <laughs> going back because I, I, I need to be in a different mindset to take it in. Um, so I do want to go back to that. But there's this. So y'all know I like feet to deal with it. Okay. So. There's this thing, um, is it's called like NYC Foot Party, and it's okay. like you just you you sign up in advance, and they I think they have them like every Saturday or like every okay. other Saturday, and you go, and it's like it's just a safe space for you. You could it's it, you could be any kind of person, somebody you just want to give a foot massage, you just want to receive one. There are rooms set up for if you want to take the play a little deeper. Okay, um, it's mostly just like any people okay. that are foot fetishes and people that are in it, you know, whatever, to gather and feel like. They don't have to hide any of that, you know, whatever. And my friend Francis said he was going to go with me, and I signed up, and I didn't go, and I chickened out. There we go. And um, they're still having them, and, like, they send me the emails because I signed up for it. So they're like, hey, the next one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm and it's pulling like, up. <laughs> and I just, I just ignore the emails. But, yeah. you know, one day I, I think I really want to go because – um, it would be nice to know, just like know other people yeah, that are like, yeah, you know. So, yeah, and that brings up what we were discussing. I'm not going to put you out what we were discussing on the way here about the whole asexuality thing. Yeah. But I think that there's like, you have to really do your research because there are people out there that have the same kinks and fetishes that you do. Yeah. And I think that that's like a positive way to actually like express and research. And you it's know? so easy to feel like you're alone, but it's like, you're really not. You're like, not, there, do the same thing you know, there are so many people and there, there are communities communities out there that you know are for you and in the amazing thing about these um i must say fringe because i can't think of another word at the moment the amazing thing about these fringe communities is that they're so welcoming mm-hmm. um and they really accept you you know what i'm saying whatever level that you're at you know what i'm saying they got you you know like um it's never like a situation where you feel like you have to do a certain thing because you're there you know whatever um and that's really great, and I love that. So shouts out to y'all. But you know, I think I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna go to one of those uh, foot party things. I'll let y'all know because y'all, I talk about everything on Twitter. So we'll see how it goes. It's so funny because my boyfriend had said he followed a foot page, and then he said I unfollowed it because it was just too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, God. honestly, like there. That's why I I mentioned like whatever level you're at because the, I'm Yo. on a certain level, and then uh, it's too, you know there it's are too much. you're right. It's too much. Uh-huh. There are there are levels that are you know farther down than where I'm at, and I'm like, whoa, that's really intense. Like, I don't know if I could do all of that. So, um, I ain't got that to do. I think I want to go, and I'll, I'll tell y'all about it uh, on Twitter. Uh, plug, follow me on Twitter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> plug yourself. We'll have an Aaron moment. Oh, good mm-hmm. lord. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So uh, <laughs> I have. I just said I've never been to a sex party. Um. But I would love to swing with other couples. I've said this before, Mm -hmm. and I would love to be in a swingers community. Mm -hmm. Could you look at them the same afterwards? It's no shade. You with your husband. I'm with my husband. We do what we do. We go back to our husbands. But then what if the dick was good and you want their husband? You got to be mature about it. I like. Mm-hmm. I think I'm very like with my relationship and just how I think of in my previous relationships. Like I'm very secure in what this person provides for me and who that person is for there me. So there's nothing that you can do or say to fuck that up. Fuck that up because like you know my man takes care of me. And that's fantastic. <laughs> and my like, man. You know if your mindset was anywhere different than that, I would be like I don't know yeah, if that's I'm a good idea. That. You know, but with your mindset being what it is, it's a fantastic idea. Yeah. It's you know it's exploration. It's it's Explore pleasure. Body, it's great. You know, um, I think the whole thing is really interesting. I mean, I'm not in a relationship, but if I were, I think I think that would be that would definitely be something I want to explore. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's a really cool thing. Let's have fun, girl. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead with that, Malik. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, it may just be my 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 youth <laughs> talking to no. me that says 
It's just you. It's just you. Right. Or, wait, wait. I was going to no. just say, I was okay. literally just about to say, it's it may be my youth or it just may be me. It's you. <laughs> but, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's a no. Um, girls, what? Is it time for jam? No, yeah. bitch, I got a question. Okay. Um, I'm about to put y'all hoes on the spot because I'm I'm oh, I'm God, bored and I'm girl. into some juicy. Go. And Malik likes to talk about how he puts the bitches on spots, okay. and I'm about to start doing it with you hoes. But I'm ready, though. That's the shit. Okay, so, so bitch, I want to know who is your social media crush? I have so many. Oh girl, I'm messy and bitch, I'm actually so ready. Girl, you set the train because I don't no. really have a crush. Bitch, we all have ones. Oh, and I'm ready. Malik, go first. You got a man, but it's uh-huh. for play. I gotta find him because I don't even know the tea. We, we talk on. We have um, PSA right? to Malik's man: okay. If you're listening, it is for play uh-huh. and don't come for Trey because go. just don't well, come, come for on. me. I gotta yeah. find his Instagram because I we we speak on Jack, so I don't. Uh, oh. Okay. Ooh, okay. Girl, now we over here doing the search. Oh, um. Yes. yes um. So, Mr. Aaron. You Can you tell us your, your social media crush? Okay. No. Bitch, so that is it. Tell us. You tell everybody. Just tell us. Yeah, go ahead, girl. I don't really have one. You sure? Use a lie. <laughs> so what I'm not about to do is revisit things that I talked about okay, well, on... Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Because that's, that's why that's why you brought this up, because you're a messy bitch. And that's what I'm not about to do is... Re- if y'all want to know the tea, then y'all can listen to episode no. 15 of the podcast Eat, Pray, Thought. Bitch, we got um, our own shows. The Tell episode us. is called Never Too Much, and if you want to, you know, whatever. See, Here's the thing about me. I have a jillion social media crushes, so it's like, one. you know, I don't know. I mean, you know what I like? I like the men's, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that. my social You're media whack. crush is, is men. You're whack. You are whack and... No, I'm not having it. Not, Malik, it's your doing. turn. Malik, that, no, what you trying to do is you not put me on like a spot, and I'm not here for that. Well, well, no. always I know spot. what I can do because this is someone. I'm. I think I'm gonna start a dating service. Um, <gasps> bitch, can I sign up? And this is someone that I just, just want to. He's such a great guy, and I think that he is an amazing. I love that. He's an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his type is. You know, you know, I don't know what he refers to or how he identifies, but I've spent time with Brandon and I think that he's an amazing guy. It's someone that like I've met recently. We've done lunch mm-hmm. and he's just an all around great guy. I think he would make someone of amazing boyfriend. Let me see him. Um his uh <laughs> his Instagram is humble B. So it's underscore humble H U M B L E underscore B. So yeah, hit him up. You know, Bronx nigga, I believe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah. He's gonna love that. He's he's amazing. And and he's a huge fan of the show, Brandon. Shout out to you. You know I love you. And yeah. (laughs) Oh, I love him. That's so I don't have a crush, but I'm trying to get y'all girls married. So yeah. Uh Blow him up. See, that's what I like. It had to be a crush. You could have said anybody, Uh bitch. Stevie. Oh, Stevie ain't got no girl, girl. Uh-uh. Uh, my crush is me. Boom. <laughs> I love myself and everything about me, and that's the crush. Y'all bitches Boom. ain't no fun. And I set me up, girl. I see when I want to be messy, y'all bitches don't want to be messy. Well, girl, then yeah. listen. You set that tone for that girl. Who is your crush? Put that no, out there, why mama. would I put myself out there? I was oh, get y'all you want to drown first. us, girls? We we still up here floating, girl. I know. I can swim, <laughs> and so can we. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so bitch, since that was a flop, <laughs> okay. boom. Um, I'm going back oh, to the. Hold on, I'm, no, 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 no. Oh, I got another one. Look, I'm up. just, I'm just. Put the girls out there. Look, that's it. Look, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, is it time for jams of the week or what? Um, yeah, I guess I'll start the countdown. Okay. Stevie, you first, since you wasn't answering no motherfucking questions. Oh, bitch, you tried it. Um. I don't. I need a second. Someone else, please go. Ahead. Okay, Aaron. Oh my God, none of you holds this. Go. Um. So, um, this is called "Swap It Out" by Justin Bieber. Okay. This is from his <laughs> Journals album. Um, it's an amazing song. Um, I love. I'm not really a big fan of Justin Bieber, but his Journal album was a pretty 
solid R&B album. Um, And it's kind of like one of my go-tos. I remember when I lived in Virginia and I was dating this guy and we literally, I stayed on the beach and we played the album with the beach house door open and we like listening to the album while the waves crashed in. So it was amazing. Um, So I'm kind of like always like, you know, attached to that album, so to speak. Stevie, are you ready, darling? I am ready. Um, the girl group, uh, they were, uh, what are they? Uh, <laughs> uh, the OMG girls, uh, they broken up into, yeah, they, they broke into solo, solo, um, careers, you know, Tiny's daughter. And there was a girl, her name is Baja Rodriguez. She has a new EP out called Take Three. Um, and I, I'm weird when it comes to music, so I check out everything. Um, she has a song on the album that's called My Life. And I've been bobbing to that since it dropped out, you know earlier this week so i really like the song she's basically talking about she's not letting no nigga fuck up her life for nothing she's focused on herself and getting herself together so my life by baja rodriguez is my jam of the week yeah baby yeah okay aaron do you have one you don't have a jam of the week girl i mean no not really the last song you listen to on your phone that could be it what's the last song come on jam of the week girl you know what it is Come on. Let me just say that um, we do have meetings before the shows, and we are often told to have a jam of the week. Uh, well, actually, we are yelled at to have one by Malik. I need y'all to have a jam of the week. Um, but I have one, I believe. Girl, I was lying. I don't no, got one. <laughs> no, um, I do have one. Okay, so my jam of the week is um i'm gonna dig in a crate a little bit you know um i've been listening to tony 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 okay slow wine okay wait 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 parentheses yeah. c's mm-hmm. slow grind okay. okay slow wine slow grind ah uh, you get to get into that one mm-hmm. um but no i've been um one thing that i will say it has nothing to do with the song but um okay. i have mm-hmm. i made a playlist of old 90s dance hall reggae songs that my dad would play in a car all the time and i just couldn't get old. like i made the playlist and i've just been listening to it ever since and i'm not that type of bitch but make, like and you make your it's, playlist it's really been mm-hmm. giving me everything i've needed and wanted and i've just i just had to plug myself for a little bit um so, Aaron, do you not have one? You have yeah, one? Yeah. He got one now. <laughs> I love how y'all move each other off the mic. Uh-huh. Real fierce. It's <laughs> very brother, it's, it's brother and sister-like. Like, bitch, give me my time. Okay. <laughs> okay, Aaron, your jam of the week, baby. Go ahead. My jam of the week is um, my friend. His name is Jeff Taylor. Um, his EP is called Retrograde, and it is on SoundCloud. Um my gem of the week is his cover of Amy Winehouse's song "Love Is a Losing Game." Um, that is a fantastic song all by itself, and Jeff does it justice. It's really, really, really good. Um, I highly recommend you listen and also check out his full EP because it's amazing. And yeah, you know, it would be really dope. I'm just gonna say, what if we had like live music on the show? But we couldn't. We couldn't. But um, anyway, I was just thinking and out loud, and y'all just should ignore me. Um, like we always say, catch us every motherfucking Wednesday. Every motherfucking Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Pips. Uh-huh. Um, and we love y'all. And don't forget, we are a safe space, and y'all can hit us up about anything. Anything. Right. Um, and we love y'all. All right, baby. Bye. Yeah, baby. While he was feeling, I was beaming in the beam of just beaming. Can't believe that a couple men cheating. So I found another way to make him pay for it all. So I went to Neiman Marcus on a shopping spree. And on the way, I grabbed Sony and Mia. And as the cash box rang, I thought everything away. Oh, there goes the ring we used to say.